quantum computing versus blockchain. In this video, we will explain why and how quantum computers are a threat to blockchain. First, what are quantum computers? These are computers that use qubits as their smallest unit of information. By comparison, the devices we use today, such as mobile phones, classical computers and laptops, store information in bits, which can take only one of two states, zero or one. Meanwhile, in quantum computers, qubits play the main role. They are microscopic particles that live according to the laws of quantum mechanics and can take all possible states simultaneously, but in different proportions. To learn more, you can read about the principle of quantum superposition, which is outside of the main topic of this video. At the moment, no quantum computers are commercially available yet, because they are at a very early stage of development. Besides, the cost of solving a problem with them is enormous compared to conventional electronics. It's like trying to use a 30-ton ENIAC to play Tetris, which even a wristwatch can now do. That said, Google has proven that its relatively weak quantum computer was able to solve one very specific problem in three and a half minutes, while today's 100,000 super servers would take 10,000 years to solve it. Due to design features, quantum computers can very easily solve the integer factorization problem, the discrete logarithm problem, or the elliptic curve discrete logarithm problem. Coincidentally, those problems are exactly the ones that are very difficult for classical computers. That is why they are used in encryption, since it would take tens of thousands of years to solve them. Most of the passwords, keys, and certificates built on RSA, DSA, ECDSA algorithms would be rendered essentially useless by quantum computers. In other words, cracking any certificate, password, or private key is a computational problem, albeit a very difficult one. Imagine telling a friend, the access code to my phone is the product of 534 and 122. Your friend doesn't know the solution right away, but by spending some effort, they will be able to get the answer and access your phone. This is a very, very great simplification, but the point is that cracking some encryption algorithm is just a computational problem. Multiplication, division, exponentiation, taking the logarithm and so on. Encryption strength is determined by just how complex the computational problem is at the heart of the encryption algorithm. Asymmetric encryption, which is used in cryptography, is based on the so-called one-way functions, which are not fully what they are, but they can be computed easily in one direction, but the inverse is much more difficult. A simple example is the square of a number and the square root. Getting the number b the square of the number a is significantly faster than getting a the square root of b. Asymmetric encryption is based on the concept of private and public key. The private is not disclosed to anyone and the author signs their messages with it, while the public key is known to everyone and allows the recipient to authenticate the origin and verify the message's integrity. The private and public keys are bound by a one-way function. The private key can be quickly converted into a public key, while the reverse transaction would take tens of thousands of years. At the moment, quantum computers are very weak. In the near future, probably 5-10 years, however, they will be able to compute a private key from a public key in less than an hour. Bitcoin has an important feature, which is that all public keys are additionally hashed and stored in this form. Hash is another one-way function, and the reverse of the hashing operation is beyond the power of even quantum computers. A Bitcoin wallet address is a hashed version of your public key. You can transfer your funds to such a wallet and be sure that a quantum computer won't hack it. But there is a huge problem. When you send even a small amount of money from this wallet, you must disclose the unhashed public key so that it can be used to verify your private key, that is, your right to send funds. A wallet from which funds have been sent at least once is equivalent to, in the world of quantum computing, an account whose password can be googled. That is, 
All the money can be withdrawn by an adversary at any time with a quantum computer. To address this problem, your wallet needs to be changed with every transaction. Many wallet applications already support this security mechanism. When you send funds from your wallet, the specified amount is sent to the intended address, while the remainder of the funds stored in the sending wallet is sent to the so-called change wallet. However, even with the constant changing of wallets, there is still a danger. Your public key becomes public knowledge, the interval between the time you submitted a transaction and the time it was confirmed. And an attacker can get hold of your private key and launch another, another transaction on your behalf with a higher fee. This would cancel your transaction and process the attacker's transaction, and you would lose all your money. It takes about 10 minutes for a Bitcoin transaction to be validated, but sometimes it can reach up to 8-10 hours if the network is very busy. Once quantum computers learn to calculate the private key from the public key in less than 8 hours, the Bitcoin blockchain will be compromised and cannot be considered secure anymore. And the good news is that this is at least 5 years away by which time it's more than realistic to transfer Bitcoin, Ethereum and other cryptocurrencies to post-quantum cryptography. In conclusion, even a very slow quantum computer that cracks one private key in a month will gain access to wallets that have already been used before. Deloitte estimates that up to $40 billion could be stolen with a quantum attack, but that would likely devalue Bitcoin immediately and make the investment in developing a quantum computer to steal bitcoins worthless financially. Google's quantum computer could probably already be stealing everyone's bitcoins, but of course they won't do that, since their reputation is more valuable. For now, there is no need to be scared. There is almost zero probability that someone would use quantum computers to hack wallets. Meanwhile, blockchains will continue to improve and provide security. Thank you for watching this video. We would like to say that the Octacore team in turn is ready to help translate any of your ideas into blockchain and create the next tech unicorn.